just enjoy our salvation. For those that don't know you, Lord, they'll hit this altar and get saved before it's too late. Bless the preaching, the singing, the praying, the fellowship. We thank you for it all. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated this evening. All right, I've got a couple of announcements this evening. All right, if you were not here last night, there is porter potties right out these back doors. That is for the men, and the two bathrooms in the auditorium are for the ladies. Again, the men's bathrooms are in the back. Ladies' bathrooms are in the church, so make sure no men go over there. Amen? All right, and then uh, tonight we are having nachos after church. Uh, for You guys can stick around and fellowship. There's drinks over here, so make sure you do not get these drinks until after service. And then tomorrow morning they are having breakfast here at the church for, every, for anybody that shows up at 10 o'clock, right? No, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, service starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, so make sure you guys come out for that. And is there any other announcements? Oh, and tomorrow night, service starts at 4 o'clock. And that, we did that just because people had to go home to their home churches, and it will give them some rest. So make sure you guys are here at 4 o'clock for tomorrow night's service. All right? Let's have the ushers come on up. We'll take up offering, and let's pray. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to open up the altar and come on up here. And any men, women want to pray, ask the Lord to give you something tonight. Amen. Open your eyes, your heart, and your ears, and your mind, and pray for the preachers that are going to be preaching, and um, that God will work. Amen. Lord, we thank you, God, for your goodness to us tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us, God, Lord, to be here, yes. God, Lord, in your presence, God, Lord, in this place, God, dedicated, Lord, to the preaching yes. of your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd move among us, God, Lord, touch our hearts, God, Lord, there's a lot of different needs represented here tonight. God, Lord, we're unaware, God, of all the things, God, that need to be done, but God, you know. Father, we pray, God, Lord, that you'd help us, yes. God, Lord, pray that you'd speak to each individual, God, Lord, there's young folks, God, Lord, there's adults here, and God, Lord, I know, God, that this is a meeting that's geared towards the young folks, but God, Lord, I pray that, Lord, that not hinder you, God, from dealing with me. God, Lord, these young folks, God, I pray that you'd give them something, Lord, Yes. God, that'll help them to see, Lord, that serving God, living for Jesus Christ is the best life that there is. God, Lord, open their hearts, God, open their minds. God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that's said and done to your glory and honor. God, pray that you'd be with the gentlemen, God, Lord, that's moderating the meeting. God, Lord, we pray, God, that you'd be with these preachers tonight. God, yes. fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, Lord, we pray. God, give them divine inspiration. God, Lord, we need you. God, Lord, if, Lord, if we come, God, and meet, Lord, and God, Lord, you don't show up, God, little Lord, it'll all be in vain. God, Lord, we pray. God, that not be the case. God, help us tonight, Lord. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Boy, sir, good. Good to be in. I, aren't you thankful we can have a meeting like this? Man, up north, man, we can have a meeting like this. What a blessing. And we want that. Keep on having meetings like this up north. And we want, we want the Lord to move. Amen. We'll go to do something. Now, Brother Roscoe had a meeting like this up in, uh, uh, up in uh, Rochester. A good meeting. My, it's still going on, thank God. But the Lord took Brother Roscoe home and prayed for his church, prayed for his son, that they would continue on doing what they do there. And, uh, man, they, we've seen people get their lives changed at that meeting. You could get your life changed at this meeting. Amen. We want to see God change your life. I mean, how many of y'all just tired of the day-by-day -day junk that you go through? Y'all tired? I mean, we want something, man, fresh, something good, something something where God speak to you, where God get a hold of you. And where you know it's God. It's not just somebody else's conviction. It's not somebody... Somebody telling you this or your preacher saying that you want God to meet with you like brother Jason was preaching last night And it, you want God to meet with you and, and I, that's when we asked y'all to come pray you young people just pray say Lord uh, I, I've told this story many times. I was down at a blowout down in Pensacola and, uh, and the preacher was preaching. It was good preaching 
and I wasn't getting nothing. And if you're not getting nothing, it's your own fault. And I went outside, and I took a drink of tea, and I looked up the stars, and I said, God, I need something. Will you give it to me? He said, you're a preacher. Yeah, I need something. And, and you know what? I went back in, and Brother Danny Farley got up to preach. And Brother Danny started preaching. Man, I'll tell you what, tore me to pieces. And man, it got a hold of me, and I went down to the altar. I was down there crying and praying. I said, man, you say, oh, that's kind of, kind of sad. No, it was rejoicing, man. It was good. Man, it, it done something for me. It, it, it made me go another mile. Amen. And that's what you want. You want something that will help you go another mile for the Lord. And if you're here tonight, how many, how many uh, different churches that we got representing? If you're a representative of your church, would you stand up? Represent. Stand up. You're, you're represented. All right. Tell us who you are, brother, in the back. Wait a minute. Let me run a microphone to you. There you go. Run a microphone. Real quick. We're just, this is preliminary stuff we need to go through. Uh, John Black, pastor of Cornerstone Independent Baptist Church. Amen. In Laurel, or Ferguson. Good to have Brother John. Amen. Nathan Taylor, uh, youth pastor, Red Lion Bible Church, Red Lion, Pennsylvania. Amen. Nathan Taylor. I know that name. Brother. Okay. That's your nephew. Hallelujah. Uh, Adam Haynes. Group leader, Charlestown Missionary Baptist Church, Charlestown, Maryland. Charlestown Missionary Baptist Church, amen. Praise the Lord. People went through something to get here, man. That's a blessing. Butch Rittendale, Salisbury Baptist Temple, Junior Church, Bus Ministry, Jail Ministry. Amen. amen. He still drives a bus. Amen. Hi, we're from Central Delaware Christian Academy. The Cowles family is at our school also, so amen. our students. That's all the students that came. Amen. Y'all glad they came? Amen. 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 Caesar Paula from King James Baptist Church, Nanjamoy, Maryland. Amen. Brother Caesar. We just had him just went to a funeral, my good brother. John Bard, Bible Leaders Baptist Church in Newport, Pennsylvania. Amen. 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 Brother John. Uh, Victory Baptist Church in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Bloomsburg. Amen. From Bible Baptist Church in Tyrone, Pennsylvania. Amen. Pastor Ken Patterson, Bible Baptist Church in Tyrone. Amen. Good to have you. Jim Hanson, Anchor Baptist Church, Faulkner, Maryland. Amen. What a blessing. Maryland, Pennsylvania, here we come. Nathan Henry, People's Baptist Church, folks in Georgia. Georgia. Brother Jason Dumas, Plattsburgh, New York, Bible Baptist Church, pastor there. Amen, Brother Jason. Amen. Aaron Black, Bible Baptist Church of Waldorf, uh, Waldorf, Maryland. Amen. Aaron. Caleb Holloman, Arbana Baptist Church, Mountain View, Arkansas. Amen. Mike Gray, I pastor the Saxton Independent Baptist Church in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Amen. Hilton Smith, pastor of Rough and Ready Baptist Church in Rough and Ready, California. He flew all the way from California here. Bill McNamara, New Beginnings Ministries, out of Bible Believers Baptist Church, Joplin, Missouri. Brad Fries, the pastor. Amen. Amen. Cody Zorn, pastor of Bible Missionary Baptist Church, Rockwell, North Carolina. Amen, brother. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Minnick, pastor of a new little church in Jenner's, Pennsylvania. Jenner's, Pennsylvania. Amen. We got some Pennsylvania, Delaware. We got uh, Pens um, New York, Maryland, and we got another Jack Patterson back there. Jack Patterson, Roll Off Reclamation Ranch, Detroit, Michigan. Amen. Uh, Brother Jack gave me these. If y'all want a plaque, look at that nice plaque. He said he'd sell them to you for $25. They had them made. So if y'all want something like that to hang up in your house, that'd be King James Bible. We also have stuff in the bookstore. You can go into our bookstore. Brother Ken's got all kinds of stuff in there. Help you, arm you a little bit. Amen. Arm you for the fight. So amen. All right. Good to have y'all. I'm glad you're here. I hope you get a blessing. I know, hey, folks, some of you pastors and youth pastors that drove all that way, you got kids in the car, 
and all that stuff, or vans. I know what you're going through. I've been there, and I still do it. We'll still do it. Um, I, we used to take 90 teenagers down to North Carolina uh, for youth camp, 90 teenagers for, for, at Brother Danny Castles for uh, youth rally. And, man, we was – and two Greyhound buses hauling them. And about, I about killed a couple kids on the way down there <laughs> and about killed some on the way back. And this one kid, man, he's smart at all. I, I'm not kidding. I, we went into a truck stop. I said, nobody get off the bus. Nobody get off the bus because you all be in there forever. And one, a couple of them got off. I said, okay. They went into the arcades. They went into the arcades, and I said, I walked in. I said, when I say go, let's go. And I walked in. I said, come on, let's go. And one kid, you always got that one kid, yeah. smart aleck little punk. <laughs> and he took a quarter out of his pocket and looked right at me and put it in the machine. I went over there and grabbed him by the back of his neck and I drug him all the way through that truck stop, him screaming. By, he was, I was dragging him backwards and he's not dead. I drug him all the way out of there, and then I took him, turned him around and kicked him in the butt and made him get on the bus. And man, I felt so bad about it. I'm driving down the road, and I'm going, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. He come up, apologized to me, and I hugged him while I was driving. And uh, I, I was praying that boy come tonight. His name is Stephen Sage, y'all pray for him. If he's watching, boy, you better get back in church. Don't forget these, all right? Usher. Uh, Usher, come on up. Let's take a ball. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Jason Garner is back there. He's now the youth pastor at New Manor. We used to go to New Manor all the time. And I used to take Trisha, and, and she'd ride the bus, and so was Jason. Jason went along, I think. And uh, we, had, we had a time. I, and I'll tell you, I wouldn't trade it. Even though what you're going through, the reason I said all that, the reason why you're going through right now to get all these kids here, I look back on it, I wouldn't trade it. Thank God for it. I mean, man, sacrifice a little bit, sacrifice time, trouble, health, sleep. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we was going to camp, I didn't sleep for 36 hours because I couldn't trust them little rats. So anyway, kept, kept my eye on them. So, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. All right, Father, thank you, God, for this offering. Bless it, I pray, God. Use it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Just sing something, Jess. Yeah. He does that to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd get in trouble. <laughs> let's, let's go with this. Yeah. I can't take a heart that's broken make it over again but I no one loves you. You may think you've got nothing in this world to live for. But can I tell you something? When I was 15 years old, on the floor of my bedroom in Newington, Connecticut, I met a man named Jesus. He wasn't just a man. 
He was God. He came inside me, boy. He got so big. Hey, listen, all those feelings that I had, does no one love me? Does no one care about me? I learned a valuable lesson real quick. Jesus cared. So you may think in here tonight that it's worthless. I know in the last couple of years, suicides increased like crazy. Drug addiction has increased. People questioning their gender, that their, all their orientation, all those different things that this world is making people question. And in just the last two years, it's gone crazy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But can I tell you something? I know Jesus. And there's plenty of times, Brother Cody, that Jesus has kept me from going off the rails. There's plenty of times that Jesus has delivered me from situations that I thought were impossible. There's plenty of times when I laid in the bed and the old devil said, nobody cares but Jesus. Jesus does. Come on, choir, come on, sing.
crowd. Amen. That, that choir sounded good. Uh, Brother Caesar stood up back there and Brother Ryman started talking about New Manna years ago. I, I remember Brother Ryman years ago at New Manna when he had color in his hair. He was, he was talking last night about speaking in tongues. I've heard him at youth camp. I've heard him at youth camp talking tongues. Seen him, Brother Jesse, we saw him handle a snake at youth camp. Saw, saw Brother Jesse drive a car down Youth Camp Road. That's a fact. Uh, but but hang, hanging out at New Manor, um, I'm going to tell you what I learned. I learned how to worship God. Learn how to worship God. Uh, I was a Southern Baptist called to preach and carrying an NIV student Bible, listening to contemporary rock and roll music. And the Lord, the Lord brought me to a church in the mountains of North Carolina. Taught me how to worship. Now that's what I want to talk to you about. They told me that the theme of the meeting would be the Lord's pleasure out of Ephesians chapter number 1. Let's go ahead and stand. Let's look in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter number 13. And then we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 61. Preacher, thank you for having me. Who am I to stand here in this place? My, my. What a blessing. What an honor. Leviticus chapter number 13. Verse number 47. Moses writing, The garment also the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the... Watch these two words. In the warp or woof of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of a skin, and if the plague be greenish, <laughs> that's real old flesh, amen, or reddish, that's rotten flesh, but not as old as the green flesh. Um, it says, if that plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin, either in the warp, there it is again, or in the woof, or in anything of the skin is a plague of leprosy, and shall be showed unto the priest. Look at verse number 51. He shall look on the plague on the seventh day, if the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in a skin or any work that is made of skin. The plague is a fretting leprosy, it is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen or uh, anything of skin wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest shall look and behold the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. Look on down in verse number 56. You find that uh, warp and woof again there at the bottom part of verse number 56 as well as verse 57. Uh, verse number 58, the ninth time you find it here. And the garment, either warp or woof or whatsoever thing of skin it be, which thou shalt wash. If the plague be departed from them, uh, uh, then it shall be washed the second time and it shall be clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen, either in a warp or woof or anything of skins, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Isaiah 61, verse number 3 there. Isaiah 61 and verse number 3. 
to Isaiah 61.3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want to preach to you just for a little while this evening this thought. The warp and the woof in your garment of praise. The warp and the woof in your garment of praise. Father, thank you for loving us. Thanks for be, uh, being good to us, watching over us throughout the day. It's been a good day, Lord. A uh, good day of fellowship. Uh, Lord, just another day that you've, you've petted on me and spoiled me and took real good care of me. And you've allowed me, Lord, to be here tonight. The exclamation point of my day. Uh, what an honor it is to be here. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing, every bit of it. To hear Brother Jesse again, hear that choir. It does something for this preacher. Now, Lord, I'm here, uh, and I, I want to say things, number one, that's going to glorify you. Uh, Lord, and right next to that, I want to say things that's going to help the people in this room, your people, Lord. Uh, I, I want you to work through me, Lord, to stir up praise and worship down inside of us. That When we leave here, not just at church, in our prayer closet again, uh, Lord, in our personal devotions, wherever we may be, it might be at work, might be at school, might be at home, uh, might be in the church house, that we're going to be a people uh, that are going to sit at the feet of Jesus and worship Him because of who He is and all the many good things that He's done for us. And Lord, You sure have been good to us. Thank You, Lord, for all that You've done. What, what a blessing. That you, Lord, that we have the book. Uh, and we know where the book is. What, what an honor, Lord, uh, that we have the Word of God. Uh, what an honor, Lord, that we still uh, have the local church. Lord, we've seen all hell come against it. Uh, Lord, but that we can still gather in places like this to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches represented in this room. Oh, what an honor. What a blessing. Uh, thank you most of all that we have Jesus. Now, help us, Lord, to return unto our first love to give you that praise and that honor in which you're due. Now, Lord, preach us to that end. We'll Thank you if you do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Run right up here, Coda. This is my boy, Coda. I used to watch Wheel of Fortune with my mamma Gray. They had Vanna on there. I've got Coda. She's pretty, ain't he? Oh, like her there. I, I preached this message in North Carolina. Oh, it's been a few years ago. Brother Cody and I was doing a youth meeting there. Um, and some weeks after I preached it, I had a seamstress. I did not know it, but there was a seamstress that was in the room that listened to me preach the message. And some weeks when I finished preaching the message, I received this in a mail. Uh, now, some of you ladies might remember, uh, I remember my sister used to get the little loom that she would make the pot holders out of for Christmas or for a birthday. Uh, that's really, that's, that, that's a loom is what it is. Uh, the seamstress that I preached to, I didn't realize she was sitting there, um, but I preached out of this text about the warp and the woof. Uh, she has a very large loom. She makes clothes, so of course that she does. Uh, and her husband had made the loom, and he, he told me after he had called me and told me that it was in the mail and things like that, he said, you know, the whole time you preached that message out of, out of Leviticus 13, I asked my wife, because she's a seamstress, uh, is that true, what he just said? Is that true, what he just said? Uh, I said, Brother, Brother Matt, it, it must be embarrassing for you to admit to me that you had to ask your wife to see if the preaching was correct. Uh, but but he, asked, he, he said, and, and she told me uh, that everything you said in that text was true about the warp and the woof. Now, those two words many times will pass over things like that in the Bible uh, and be like, well, what exactly what is that pertinent to? What's the significance of that in the Bible? Well, uh, if your Bible you probably know that whenever, if, if you look at this loom, a very small version of what uh, the seamstress Miss Matney uses, uh, the warp on this, that's the strands that are going vertical like this. Uh, she started at the top right here, uh, and what she did was, if you notice when we read the text, it was always warp first, right? Uh, it was warp and then woof. So uh, she, she placed all the vertical lines of material first, uh, starting at the top. Hello. Starting at the top. Hello. Um, starting at the top, coming down to the bottom. And then what she did was she began to weave in and out these other pieces of material, the woof. Now, you can see in that illustration there uh, that if you've got the warp 
and the woof, you can just see in that very symbol, right? The cure or the healing for leprosy. Leprosy is a type of sin. You can see the cross in the warp and the woof. Uh, you can see practically how to apply it to your life. Uh, where, where does it begin? It starts right here. You love the Lord thy God first. That's the first commandment. With all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. It's the warp first. It's always listed first. That's the only place in the Bible where it's at. Uh, it's listed first. It's the this relationship first. It's the warp. And then this relationship is likened to it. You love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, now, when you think about that, uh, it is warp and it is woof. Uh, here's what I found as well. Uh, I found that this horizontal, the weight of this, it hinges upon the vertical. Uh, the weight of all this material uh, going this way, it's hinging upon this right here. Now you get the practical application of that. Uh, you have trouble going this way. Amen. Uh, how are you going to deal with trouble going this way? You young people, how are you going to deal with trouble with your friendships and uh, uh, in your family and I pray life? I'm going to tell you how. This has to be first. And if this is first, it's going to bear the weight of this right here. Now when you get to thinking about uh, a garment being like Praise. Watch this now. You can sit down. Thank you, Vanna. Um, when, when you get to thinking about a garment being like praise, when you study vesture in the Bible, um, you find vesture in the Bible in the New Testament five times. Stay with me now. I'm going somewhere. Three times. Uh, that it, it's actually it's in three different areas. Uh, it is in creation. That's in Hebrews chapter number one. You find the vesture. Uh, you find it uh, at Calvary in John chapter 19 and Matthew chapter 27. You find the vesture there. Uh, and probably the most familiar is the vesture that is listed in Revelation 19. Uh, you find it twice there. And that's where the Lord is coming again in His second coming. Now, when you get to thinking about why, why do we praise Him? Uh, okay, we're here, uh, and we're going to praise Him. Why are we going to praise Him? Well, I'm going to tell you why we're going to praise Him. We're going to praise Him because He is very Creator God. Yeah, in Hebrews chapter number 1 and verse number 8, uh, the Father declares that the Son is... God. And in verse number 12, here's what the Lord says. When you go out tonight, it's cloudy, so you might not be able to see them tonight, but if you can, you're going to go out and look up at that big starry vesture. And the Lord says in Hebrews 1.12 that what He's going to do one day is He's going to take off that vesture of creation and He's going to fold it up and it's going to be changed, it says. But thank God He's forever the same. Amen. And He goes on to let us know again who that is in, at the close of Hebrews. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. But here's why we're going to praise Him, boys. We're going to praise Him because He is very Creator God, number one. Amen. Uh, now, when you get thinking about that, that's what separates us, Brother Cody, from all the cults and isms of the world. It's what think ye of Christ. Well, here, here's what we think about Jesus. We think He's God. Amen. Um, the Mormons say, well, He's just one of many gods. No, He is the very God. Uh, the Jehovah's Witness say, well, He's the Son of God, but not God. Not as much God as God the Father. No, I got news for you. Uh, he is every bit as much as God as God the Father. And he's not just the Son of God. He is God. Uh, the Muslims say, well, he's the prophet of God, uh, but he's not God. No, I got news for you. He is the prophet of God when he came. Amen. But he is very God of the prophets. Uh, he's God. Amen. Uh, now, you believe he's God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Uh, Paul said he was God manifest in the flesh. When he was born, they, they called him Jesus because he would save his people from, his, from their sins. But thank God, too, they called him Emmanuel because he is God with us. Now, when you get thinking about that, watch this. Stay with me now. I told you I'm going somewhere. Uh, the oldest story in the world, as far as what is recorded, is in the book of Job. Most ancient, the most ancient book. Now, if you went to college or in public school, maybe they taught you the most ancient story in the world is about some Babylonian boy and his dog. No, that's not true. The most ancient story in the world is why does Job love God? That's a good question. 
You, you know that story probably. It's where the sons of God uh, come up to present themselves before God. Uh, and here comes Lucifer as well to, pre to present himself. And there is this challenge between uh, the Lord and the devil, Satan, uh, about what about Job? Have you considered my servant Job? Uh, and in the Mike Gray translation, it goes like this. The devil, uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed him, but... Come on, God, look, look at his farm and look at his finances and look at his family and look at the soundness in his flesh. Now, you're going to brag on Job. Here's what we know. Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Uh, just let me add him. Let me add him. Remove the hedge from, let me touch his finances. Let me touch his family. Let me touch his flesh. And what you're going to find is, just like anybody else, he will cuss you to your face uh, because Job only loves you for what you've done for him. He don't love you for who you are. See, true love is this. I love you because of who you are. Not because of what you do for me. And the challenge is on. And God removes the hedge. And thank God Job passes the test. Amen. And Job's idea of life is this. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, God gave it to me. God has a right to take it away from me. What I'm going to do is I'll sit in the very ashes of all that's left and I'm going to worship God because he's God. Now I don't doubt there's some people in the room that have lost some things. And if you're here, this is your opportunity to prove the devil wrong. To pass the test of worship. And are you going to worship God because of who He is? Very Creator God or just because of what He does for you? I talked to somebody tonight coming in. Hadn't seen him in a while, preacher. He lost some things. He lost some things. Now there you sit tonight, brother. And there's a few more of you in this room. You've lost some things. It's the oldest story in the world. It's your opportunity to do like Job. Pass the test, prove the devil wrong, and worship God because he's God. I'm sure I've used this illustration before. I've met very few like this. Sister Christy Jarbo, lady in our church, sing like a bird, Beautiful young lady, married, married a fellow in our church who was a vice president of a bank. They had everything going for them. And I, I mean, I, brother, God's blessing them financially. Uh, they're just a good-looking couple, young couple in their 30s. Well, Miss, Miss Christy Jarbo started blacking out and wrecked an automobile, couldn't figure out what was going on. And they started doing CAT scans and different things. And eventually they figure out that she had a tumor on her brain stem. Now, brother, stuff like this only happens in Kentucky, I'll promise you. They went in to remove the tumor, and they removed part of her brain and none of the tumor. Major surgery on the brain, number one. So they realized we made a big mistake. We didn't remove any of the tumor, but we did remove part of her brain. So within a week, two major brain surgeries. The second one, infection set in on the brain. And here's what we, they did send her home. Now this is a girl that would sing in our church and I mean just had an awesome testimony. But brother, when they sent her home from the hospital after the brain infection and surgery number two, we watched a young lady who would sing with a dynamic voice. Beautiful young lady. We watched, we watched them prop her up against the piano as she slowly died singing, God has been so good to me. Oh yeah, in a, in a gravelly tone, she would sing things like this. I've always had a place to sleep, to wear, and shoes to eat. God has been so good to me. And brother, when she would do it, all of heaven would come down. Yeah, it was painful for her to get through, but the Holy Ghost so honored her testimony that this is a young lady here that's going to worship me and praise me no matter what I'm taking from her. And brother, you know what I saw in that young lady? There's still a few, thank God, on this side of, of, of heaven that loves the Lord for who He is, not just what He's done for them. If God be God and He blessed you with it, He can take it from you just as well. And it's your opportunity to pass the test 
and prove the devil wrong. The vesture of creation. Watch it now. The vesture of Calvary. We just sang that song. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. That'll beat them new songs. Oh yeah. Shine Jesus shine. What does that even mean? And Why are you going to tell Jesus to shine? I think he has always been shining. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I like that good doctrinal stuff. By God's word, at last my sin I learned. Yeah. Got the trembling down on my soul and realized Calvary was the only hope that I have. Yeah. yeah, and you know what they did at Calvary in John chapter 19 and Matthew chapter 27? Yeah, brother, they took his vesture and they cast lots upon it. Uh, it's a prophecy that was prophesied a thousand years before. Uh, but there they are now uh, casting lots upon his vesture. Who is he? Well, he's the very creator God in Hebrews 1.12. Uh, the one that gave them life now is giving his life for them. This whole theme, the whole theme of Ephesians 1 is the federal headship of Jesus Christ in Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1. That one day the Lamb, uh, uh, He's going to be showed that He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And what He's doing is He's, he's uniting heaven and earth, uh, heaven-born, heaven-bound people, uh, earth-born, earth-bound people. And brother, hear me now, in the fullness of times, He will have the preeminence. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to worship Him. Amen. Hey, boys, we're going to worship Him as the lamb that was slain that you and I could be saved. Yeah. Now when you study that, watch it now. This lamb lion idea from, from, goes all the way, uh, as one preacher said, from generations to resolutions. Amen. But you get all the way back there to Abel. Abel, you know, different than Cain, Abel brings the blood sacrifice of a lamb. No doubt learned it from his father, Adam. Uh, God provided coats of skins for them. And the Proverbs say that it was the lambs that was their, their coats or their clothing. So uh, now Abel here, watch it. Here is the lamb typified all the way back there in Genesis chapter number 4. Now, when you get to thinking about it, uh, there's the lamb typified. In Genesis chapter 22, Abraham uh, and his son, uh, go Isaac, go up into the land of Moriah, and they get up there, they're going to worship God, and Isaac asks this question, where is the lamb? And Abraham gave him the response, God will provide himself. Yeah. A lamb. Now that's not God's going to provide for Himself a lamb. No, this is this is the prophecy. God's going to be the lamb. The lion will come as the lamb. So we see the lamb typified. Now we see the lamb prophesied. In Exodus chapter number 12, God is going to call them out of Egypt's land, redeem them out of a type of the world. And you remember in Exodus 12, they take the blood of the lamb. There's the lamb applied. Get over in John chapter number 1. John the Baptist is doing what Baptist preachers used to do. He's street preaching. And there comes Jesus walking down the road. I see him now, Brother Ken. He sees the Lord coming. He's got fire in his eyes. And he stops right in the middle of his message, whatever he's preaching. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God. There he is. Father Abraham prophesied he'd come, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You know what that is, son? That's the Lamb identified. Amen. Amen. Now I already said it in John chapter number 19, the Lamb is crucified. Why? Revelation chapter number 5, we're going to glory, and there's one thing. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. There's the Lamb glorified. Now, you know why you ought to praise Him tonight? I'm going to tell you why you ought to praise Him. You ought to praise Him, number one, because He's very Creator, and number two, because of what He did for you at Calvary. You're bought with the price, Paul said. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. But then, too, watch it, number three. Last point right here. Revelation chapter number 19. John the apostle looks up. He sees that door open twice in heaven. In Revelation chapter number 4, somebody's going up through it. Thank God. But in Revelation chapter number 19, somebody's coming down through it. And he looks up there and he says, Hey, I see that vesture again. And it's not the vesture of Calvary. 
It's the vesture of His coming. He's the very Word of God. Oh, yeah. And He's coming back. You know what will stir you up? He's coming back. This isn't all there is to it. Hallelujah, this isn't all there is to it. Amen. Now, there's, listen, there's a lot of discussion now about the second coming of Jesus. How that stuff, bro, brother, years ago when we went to New Manor, all them old preachers would get up and make fun of all the post-millennialists, right? Yeah, all you preachers nod your head right there. I don't eat post toasties. I don't go to the post office. Amen. And anyway, That stuff is on the rise. Hey, kids, listen to me. I like our part in the second coming. Yeah, I still believe it. I still believe rapture, seven years. Oh, yeah. I ain't looking for the Antichrist. Paul said we ought to be looking for Jesus Christ, our blessed hope. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Amen. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel, trump of God, dead in Christ is going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain to be called up to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Looking for the Antichrist, boys. I'm looking for my blessed hope. Amen. <laughs> this isn't all there is to it. Cheer up. He's coming back on a rescue mission. Brother Jesse, I heard somebody say, well, we ought to love his appearing, not our disappearing. Why can't we love both? I love his appearing, but don't you think for one minute I don't love my disappearing. I'm with John. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Get me out of this stinking mess in which I'm, I'm tired of the system of the world. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of Satan. Hey, I'm tired of self. I'm sick and tired of me, brother. I want to shake this skin off like snake does during dog days. Amen. And sell on out of here and see my Savior face to face up around the throne and cry worthy. It's the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Yeah, checking on out of here. The rest of it, just like the old plowman, there's still a few of them back home that work them mules. And they'll harness up and they'll work that beast and wear them straps. And brother, they'll get down when they're finished and they'll just take all that stuff off the beast and lay those straps down. Oh yeah, so we're going to lay it all down. We're going to rest one day. Yeah, I look forward. Do you know what else I look forward to? I look forward to the reunion. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them. My old preacher, old brother Vernon Price. I already told you, Southern Baptist, that's what I was. But you know how, you know how I ended up using those new translations? I had an old-time King James hacking mountain preacher for a pastor, but he messed up and let his son-in-law teach Wednesday night Bible study. Taught us out of a paraphrase. Messed me up. But my old hacking mountain preacher had God dripping off of him. He'd get up, Brother Cody. He didn't have fingers, he had sausages. He'd point them little fat fingers, had jaws like a bulldog. He'd get up and point them fingers, dying of cancer, preached himself to death, sitting in the clergy chair. They'd prop him up against a pulpit, and old brother Vernon Price, now he's one of, you understand this, you're from the South. He's one of them black suit only, black suit, black tie, black wingtips, and white tube socks. That's Kentucky. And that old man get to bearing down on it and pointing them little fat fingers and them jaws to get to working. I'm a telling you, you must be born again. And he'd preach on everything that wiggled. And I'd, I'd sit there as a young preacher boy I, with fear and trepidation. And that old man of God would preach and preached himself right on into the grave, brother. I'm going to see him again one day. He's not going to be in a cancer-ridden body. Hallelujah. He's not going to be in an old broke down body that worked and labored for the Lord all the whole. Oh, no, he's going to be in the glorified body. And we're going to sing again together. And we're going to shout again together. No more need to pray for his preacher boy or preach to his preacher boy. No, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to praise the Lord. That's what we're going to do. Oh, that's exactly right. I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah Square. What a wonderful time. 
I'll have up there. We'll sing and praise Jesus, His glory to share. And you'll not see an old man in Hallelujah Square. My papa good and my papa gray worked in deep mines their whole life. Died of black lung. They were solid, solid Bible believing Baptist men. My papa gray, I, I remember my papa gray when I got saved at the first Baptist church of Rock Olds, Kentucky. My papa gray was that old man that sit up front and his back from working in those mines, he'd been busted up and his back was like this. His hands were all arthritic and had them, them blue scars where the rocks and the mines had fell in on him before. And he'd turn around. The preacher would always make that mistake saying, anybody got a word? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My papa always had a word. Yeah, my papa turned around and look at them and tell them every time that the Lord rescued him from the mines. Yeah. How God had provided for him when when he did, what, no, didn't have uh, uh, no no ends meet no meat at either end and how God provided groceries and how God protected his family and how God saved them old Baptist girls in the back be going shh, yep. Shh. Yep. some y'all might be thinking that now. Shh. You can see I take after Papa, amen. I, I, I used to think as a young boy, we were Christers. We only went on Christmas and Easter, but I'd hear them a whoof and a carry on. My Papa testified, and I'd think, man, can Papa not hear them, or does he just not care? Yeah. By the way, I'm like Papa Gray. I don't care. <laughs> Smile and nod. But I'm going to see him again. I got saved, Brother Jesse. And he come up and shook my hand with that little arthritic hand of his and looked up at me as his back was all stooped over. He said, Michael, today you made the smartest move you've ever made. Receiving Jesus, you'll never get over this. It's the best decision you ever made. Oh, I'm going to see him again. Hallelujah. Yeah, me and Papa, we're going to sing around the throne. I look forward to that reunion. Raised unchurched, went back on my own at 16 years of age. Rode church busing. Went two years before I got saved. Went by myself. First person I won was my mama. Had an older sister, younger brother. Won my older sister, and then I won my younger brother. So next thing you know, I'm pastoring. And I'm pastoring my mama sitting here. My baby brother, my older sister sitting back there, and their families are now they, they're started and they're sitting there. My daddy is old rough Harlan County, Brother Jack, Harlan County redneck. Crippled up in the military, rough. Told him he'd never walk again. 80% disabled. He got out drinking one night, preacher. Threw his, he had drug his legs behind a walker. Got drunk, got partying, threw his walker over a bluff. Just a poor boy from Harlan County. He said, I thought to myself, well, that was stupid. I'm going to get around. He said, but... Really, it's a good thing. I taught myself how to walk. Got to where he walked. No muscle on this arm. Bum leg over here. He tries best not even to limp. Worked two jobs most of the time I lived at home. I'm talking about a man's man. But he was bitter. He was hard. And he was a red neck. Now, when you're stubborn and ornery like I was, I was a rebel growing up, and you have a daddy like that, you know what that is? That's a whole lot of fighting and cussing and fussing, and it'll push your 16-year-old boy out the door at 16. That's where I was. But hear me now. Got saved at 18. Called to preach at 22. First revival meeting of the Saxton Baptist Church that we had after I started pastoring there. I went in November, revival in December. First night of the meeting, I'm welcoming people. And guess who comes through those double doors? Oh, yeah. Little beardy-faced Jerry Gray walked in in his blue jeans, T-shirt, and cowboy boots and sat back there in the back corner. And I began to pray, get him, God, get him. And good news, he did. The preacher preached that night and we sang Just As I Am. That's my favorite, that's my favorite invitation song. That's the one I got in on. And we sang just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And Brother Cody, the church began to shout in unison, Woo! I was on the altar. And somebody picked me on the shoulder and said, Brother Mike, your daddy's kneeling down beside you. I said, shut up, I know. <laughs> I've begged the Lord and I've begged the Lord, and now I'm going to thank him a while. Now, to make a long story short, that was 94. I went to church with my daddy for four and a half years. Some of y'all know the story. June 25th, 1999, I watched an old Massey Ferguson tractor turn over on my father. 
and I saw my father burn to death under a tractor. Last words I ever heard my father say was this, screaming as flames engulfed his body. Boys, last thing I ever heard my daddy say was this, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Now there's a time a few years earlier I was praying God save him, God save him. As weird as this may sound, I was praying that day, God take him, God take him. Don't let him burn to that tractor. Don't let that happen to my hero that worked hard and provided for me. No matter that past we had, we're serving you, Lord. Just take him, please take him. And they brought him up there in that old truck. And there he was, his body just scorched down one side. And I went over there and held his hand. His lungs were full. I asked him, I said, Dad, can you hear me? If you can, squeeze my hand. He'd squeeze that head like that. I'd pit on his good side. And I got down in his ear and I said, Now, Dad, here's what we know. I'm saved. Paula's saved. Scott's saved. That's his, that's his only other two children. Mama's saved. You're saved. And no matter what happens, the ambulance is on the way. No matter what happens, Dad, we all going to be together in heaven. Amen. Brother Dumas, he just worked at hand. Let me know. That's right, boy. That's right. That's right. My mama come out there, saw, saw her hero, her husband, lay in that truck, his body just blistered and scorched, screaming, Jerry, oh, Jerry. My dad took that good hand, and did, I, knew, I knew what it meant. Get her out of here, boys. Don't, don't let her see me like this. As much pain as he was in, his attitude was still, I love my wife, I don't want her to see me like this. Now, what we saw that day, I'll never get it out of my mind. But hear me, one day I'm going to see him again. It's not going to have a broken down body. It's not going to have a scorched body. Oh no, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Daddy's going to be there. Mama's going to be there. My only brother's going to be there. My only sister's going to be there. I whispered in my daddy's ear that day. I, I promise you, Daddy. I promise you. I've done my best to serve you and serve Jesus and serve Mama and my brother and my sister. And I'm making you this promise. I'm going to do everything I can to reach your grandbabies and train your grandbabies. And one day we're all going to see you. And we're going to see you on the other side. He just squeezed that hand. Now here I am tonight. He's over there. I got one of, my, one of my boys here with me. And I got two of the grandsons of Jerry Gray there. Saved. One of them recently called to preach. Hey, boys. We're going to see him one day. We're going to see you, Papa, one day, boys. And when we get there, hear me. We're not going to worship Papa. We're not going to worship Mamma. When we get there... What we're going to do is we're going to get there and we're going to worship him that gave his life so that that family circle would not be broken. Hey, kids, hear me. Hear, hear me now. I'm going to close. Here's what you need. You don't need a better sermon. You don't need a better song. I'm going to tell you what you need. You need the presence of God. Hey, preacher, listen to me. Listen to me. Get a good Bible education. I'm for it. But what you need is the presence of God. So how do we get the presence of God? It's real simple. It's real simple. The Lord said in Hebrews chapter number 10, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. You want the presence of God? It's in the scriptures. It's right there. The Lord said in Revelation 2, 1, watch it, I'm going to pray. We're done right here. Revelation 2, 1, he'd walk in the midst of all seven of the golden candlesticks. You want to know where he's at? He's amongst the saints in the local church. You want the presence of God in your life? Scriptures. Saints at the local church. But watch this. The sacrifice of praise is what the author of Hebrews called it. In Psalms 22 and verse number 3, God inhabits the praises of His people. So how do I get the touch of God on my life, Brother Mike? I, I want to reach my family. I want to make a difference. How, how do I get the presence of God and the touch of God? It's real. Stay in that book. Stay with the saints of the local church. But get in your prayer closet. Quit asking God for everything under the sun. Praise Him for a while. Come to church and praise Him. And that sacrifice of praise, He'll come down and inhabit that. Yeah, you know what this is? This is practice for heaven. It's what it is. The warp is first. The warp, and it's going to affect this. And the woof. And the garment of praise. Father, thank you for being good to us.
Lord, this thing's surely about you. It is about your pleasure. It's not about us. And Lord, we have an opportunity to prove it. Every time we lose something or we lose somebody, that's our opportunity to prove the devil wrong and still worship you because of who you are. Now, Lord, Calvary, that, that you gave your life for us, that we could be forever saved. Lord, the world didn't give it. The old song says, and the world can't take it away. And Lord, you're soon coming to get us. Oh, our blessed hope. Help us not to get over it, Lord. Help us to anticipate your coming. We're at the very last days of the church age, Lord. Help us to press on till we see you face to face. Use what's been said tonight. Please use it. Sink it down in our soul. That we'll, get, we'll get a better attitude, Lord, and more hungry just, just for that sacrifice of praise, lifting you up for who you are and what you've done. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Preach you. you're here tonight and you're not saved tonight be a great night if you're here tonight and you're not sure you say I've been questioning whether I'm saved or not why don't you get it settled tonight boy what a great time to do it what a great time heads bowed and eyes closed nobody looking around how many can say preacher I know I'm going to heaven I know without a doubt would you slip up your hand now, I can't see everybody's hand, but you can put them down. If you could not put up your hand, or, or if you were under conviction when you put your hand up, the Holy Spirit of God said, you know you ain't saved. We're not trying to recap you, but we want to make sure you're saved. I got a lot of loved ones over on the other side. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Can you imagine? Man, all the heavenly hosts, it's real, man. You got to keep your relationship between you and God. I always say this, the devil can't get your soul if you're saved, but he'll try to get your life, Amen. your family, Amen. your relationship. Get you mad at God over something that you said you prayed about. God didn't hear it. Maybe, maybe it ain't the right time. Why don't you just give it to him? If you're not saved, you know who you are. You're not saved. Please, don't leave here. Let somebody show you. Let somebody show you how to be saved. Amen. Y'all enjoy that? Boy, that was right. Right on the money. We got another preacher. Amen. We're here to do business with God. We're not here to put on the show. We're here to get something from God. How many of you here to get something from God? Raise your hand. We want the Lord to do something for us. But we want to do something for Him. And praising is what you can do. Thanking Him. Hallelujah. The Lord's good. Man, that's good. That's good. Smoot family, why don't you come on? Sing two songs for us. Um, so I was, I got saved at the age of six and I was, uh, my mom actually led me to the Lord and I got the opportunity to grow up in a Christian home, which I, I think, I thank the Lord for that. And I, I'm number eight in a family of 12. So my seven older siblings, that's all they talk about. And I'm, I remember it was, it was my time, you know, I was six years old, it was my time. So all my siblings, that's all they talked about. It's like, oh yeah, you need to get saved, you need to get saved. And, you know, as a little kid, I was, you know. I never really asked that question yet, but I remember when I was um when I was in church, they would have the the Lord's Supper probably about twice, two or three times a year maybe, and every single time that plate came around, I would always try to take that bread and take that uh take that drink out of there, and, and my mom would always slap me and say, "Hey, no, you're not saved yet," and I was like, "Man, I'm hungry. I want some food." But <laughs> but I you know after after I got home, I finally asked my mom, I was like, "Mom, what does it mean to be saved?" 
and it was it was me and my little cousin, and not my little cousin, my older cousin. We we both came, and it was on my mom's birthday, November 29th, and I remember that day clearly. And that's when my mom took at that book. She was like, you know, hell, and showed the black page, and then read for the blood of Jesus. And that that day, I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power So Jesus 
as you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a Thank the Lord. If you hadn't got something by now after that kind of preaching and this kind of singing, uh, I, I don't know what you wait. I don't know what you're waiting on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Welcome to Youth Rally. Praise God. You, I don't know what you're waiting on. 
on. That's what we come for. That's what we come for. Don't, don't wait till the last minute to get off neck deep in it. You might as well jump in with the rest of us now, friend. Yeah, he's worthy tonight. Bless his holy name. Yes, he is the best name that's ever been spoken. Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, Bright Morning Star, Chief Cornerstone, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our rock and our deliverer, our fortress, our high tower. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the ending. He is the first and He is the last. He is the Almighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the chief cornerstone. He is worthy of all of our praise tonight. Bless his holy name. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yeah, amen, preacher. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yes, glory to God. I believe you ought to come back and sing that one more time, if that's all right, Brother Ryman. I believe you ought to sing that beautiful name song one more time. I believe you ought to just sing that beautiful name song one more time. Is that okay, preacher? I'm, I'll be like one of them politicians. I'll yield some of my time to y'all. How about that? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Want to hear some more preaching? Yeah. Come on. Nothing. If you didn't get nothing, man, it's your fault. When you start praising God, He shows up. Not only does He show up in the building, He shows up in your heart. Go ahead, Brother Skill. before I even knew him. I didn't know him when he was walking this earth. I ain't know him when he died on Calvary. But every one of y'all, he knew who y'all was. And he died so we could be up there. Like they sang, we couldn't get to heaven, so he brought it down. I went to the men's meeting in uh, August, ran by him, Brother Samson, and a couple other gentlemen. The Lord was dealing with me about some things. I lived in a place that wasn't very, I was about as far from God as you can be. Dibbing, dabbling, and everything under the sun. I prayed to him the second night I was there, Lord, <clears throat> if you want me to move out, Lord, I'd go be homeless if that's what you wanted. And I truly meant it. The Lord said, no, I got something working for you. I want to say three, maybe four weeks after that, we went to go. Uh, pastor started doing prayers at, at people's houses Saturday nights. 
And uh, me and Earl went to uh, Brother Jay and Shay's house for prayer that night. Sat there talking to him to like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, just talking. And then uh, around Thanksgiving, uh, me and Miss April Tuck went on visitation. And she said, I want you to pray about something. They offered their home to me. She uh, came a, two weeks later and told Miss Sherry to pray about it. Miss Sherry said, we have an extra room for him. That's what, if, he, if the Lord wants that, have him pray about it and we'll bring him in. Amen. That's, all, that's what I wanted. I, didn't want to, I, I used Amen. to love that house I was at. Living out in the world, you, if you're out in the world, you love the things of the world. Yeah. But, when, but when you get saved and you start living for the Lord, you yeah. can't stand Amen. that anymore. Yeah. I asked him for a place that loved the Lord, a Bible-believing home, a God-fearing home. And Brother Jay and Miss Shay, they brought me with open arms. arms and Brother Jay's been helping me teach me. Miss Shay's been teaching me. Everybody in there, even Brooke and Jordan have been teaching me. Everybody in that house has been able to help me and teach me. And I just want to thank y'all. Seriously, and Lord, thank you for bringing them into my life. Thank you for getting me out of that place I was at. And thank you for being good to me. Thank you for loving me before I knew who you were, Lord. Thank you for that book, Lord. And thank you for giving me that blessed prayer of righteousness, Lord. Because ain't none of us righteous, but you are. And we're righteous through you. So thank you for that blessed plate of righteousness. Amen. He don't know what to do. I know Brother Cody, he doesn't know what to do. He don't want to get in the way of the Lord. I know that. But man, I don't know what to do. But man, I, the Lord's good, though. Like I said, if you ain't got it yet, get a hold of it. Get a hold of it. You're sitting there all, all you know, shriveled up, bitter. Go to the altar, man. That's the best thing I can tell you. Amen. Sing in your heart. Fill my cup, Lord. Whatever. Amen. What's that? Hey, come on. Come on, sing. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. I don't know if y'all realize it. A 77-year-old man was running around here tonight. Stand up there, brother. Help. 77-year-old man was shouting and running out, having a fit. I'm with him. Got up there and said, Can, "Let's stand while we uh, get the first pass." I looked at him and he was drunk. I ain't never seen that before. But I like it. Let's stand while I'm all about to stand while we sing this. Just as you up there singing, I want y'all to sing too. Don't let it just be us. If the Lord's dealing with you about something, I want y'all to sing too. This ain't just for us to sing praise to the Lord. The Lord is asking things in all of y'all's lives.
Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so you guys were probably wondering who took him in. It was me. <laughs> but it's a youth rally, but the problem, in my opinion, is the old people. Not enough of us are willing to go out on a limb for the youth. So, Olin, when he, when we talked about it, we talked to Pastor and got his thoughts, but when he came in, we sat down at the dining room table, and I told him, all right, you read uh, Titus 2, uh, 1 through, we'll just say 1 through uh, 5, so I'll read it, uh, but speak thou the things which become uh, sound doctrine that the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their uh, children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, young men, also exhort uh, to be sober-minded, and you could go on, and basically I told him, I was like, Olin, if you move in, this is, this is kind of our constitution, this is our agreement. I'm the aged man, my wife's the aged woman, and you're the, you're the young person coming in here, and we're gonna do these things for you, and you, and you be ready to take them, and he, and he has been. And like I said, and I, just saw it. Sarah, that happened to me when I was 18. Yep. So, yeah, Jesse knows. Some of you might know him, Phil Sealy. He's up in Canada now. He took me in his house. So, old people, what's, what's your problem? There's a lot of young people that need an old person to help them. So get up and do something. So. Everybody's heart right? I'm sitting there itching in my seat <laughs> whether I should get up or not. But um, God's been good in my life, and I just wanted to. I, I see everybody here hugging their dads and stuff like that. Um, that's one thing I missed out on. You know, when I came to church, um, I found out I had a father figure that actually cared for me. Amen. Um, I grew Amen. up with a drunk as if for a dad. I had scores all over me that I'm reminded of in the shower of scores that I've been in fights with him. Bless your heart, no. now, my dad's in uh, prison right now, but I said I met my wife in this church, and I'm, so, I'm just so thankful, bro. Amen. 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 Go ahead, brother. <laughs> So thankful for what God done for me. Yeah. 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 So thankful. Yeah. Yeah. I said time after time again, he should be mercy. I said I work in construction. I, I remember uh, the experience that I had. I was working on. Uh, I was at an industrial plant. I was working on 480 volts, um, and what was being stupid and. Didn't have the right things, didn't have it off, didn't even know it was on. Um, and I got locked on, it felt like it felt like two hours went by. And all I remember was thinking, I said, man, I know, I know my father's right next to me. I need you to get out of me, get me out of this situation. And uh, I said, I believe, I totally believe that God saved my life that day. Yeah, so said, amen. Grounded out and the circuit dripped off. I remember being so thankful for that day. But I'm just glad to have a father figure. If you have a father that wants you to serve God, don't take advantage of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just grab Amen. a hold of him because yeah. it's a blessing. It's something that I wish I had. Yeah. I wish I could hug my dad's neck yeah. in church. But I said, I'm so thankful for what God's done for me. I just want to share that with you. Well, I've seen that boy come a long way. How you doing, buddy? 
Love you. There's my North Carolina family down there. <laughs> um, God, I don't even know where to start. Help me. Um, some of you all know what's going on with Luke. Some of you don't. Quick story. A little six-year-old boy back there is going to face brain surgery in the next couple months. Uh, he's the kid that we were told we couldn't have, but there he sits. Um, there's some issues that we're facing. There's a lot of things going on. I'm not here to do the pity party thing. I actually came up here to praise God a little bit because we learned something. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. When he was first diagnosed at 18 months with his disorder, I'm not going to give you the big long names because they're medical and I can't say I'm right and it's it make me sound like an idiot, but I'll give you two words that help you ex explain it. Focal means focus point, all right? Diffuse means it's all over the place, all right? His first MRI, he had a focal disorder. He had one area of his brain that was affected. We found out yesterday when meeting with his neurosurgeon that the latest MRI showed that there is, it's diffused on the entire right side of his brain. Oh. We didn't know that uh, going into this. And so our understanding was that we're going to go through this surgery coming up in the next couple of months, and it's going to be a laser surgery. It's not very invasive. As long as it works, we should be okay. If it doesn't, we'll have to go in and actually open up everything and start taking pieces out. When we learned that it was the entire right hemisphere of his brain, we learned that if this doesn't work in the next couple of months, we're looking potentially at a full right side hemispherectomy. It's going to take the entire right side of his brain out. Angry was the word. Um, you know, and God wants, us to, God wants us to tell him how we feel, right? He knows. <laughs> I promise, he knows. Um, but I want to I, I give him praise because he taught me something with this. When I looked up diffuse with Luke's disorder, kids that have this diffuse disorder are not supposed to walk. But that boy walks. Amen. People with this disorder aren't supposed to talk, but I can't get him to be quiet in church. People like him are not supposed to be able to eat regularly. They're not supposed to be able to swallow. But he eats more than I do, and I'm a big boy. That tells me right there, the Lord's been with him from the beginning. He hasn't stopped with my boy. He's not going to stop with my boy. We have this coming up, and you know, it's scary. Yeah. And you know what, I, Brother Mike, I thank you, my cows. And I see Jameis walking around. I haven't said it to you because I haven't been able to. You've inspired me. You've been a good example. And I love you for it. I'm thankful. Amen. Well, I want you to continue to pray for us, help us to stay focused. And I'm going to tell you all now, he's been working on me in ways that I never thought was going to be possible with, what was going, with what's going on right now. We've had Luke in the hospital, and it's gotten to the point where he's cornered me because I'm stupid and I don't take hints. God cornered me. He has put me in a position where I can't go to anybody but him to ask for advice. There is nowhere I can go but to him. And I'm telling you, this past few weeks, have been eye-opening to say the least. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for everything that we've been seeing through the church. The buddies that call me randomly, tell me their goofy stories. We get online every now and then, I see this guy back here throwing a fit. Good to see you, my brother. Go dog, son. Yeah. Amen. Guys, thank you. I just want to come up here and praise the Lord a little bit, let him know that we might be seeing something. It might have been a shocker at first and the world was angry, right? Nah, that's a hint. It was a hint to us. Don't let the secrets, don't let the things that look like they're bad to you bring you out. Don't let them hurt you. So I'm telling you, there's something behind it. There's a reason why. And learning that that was a diffuse scenario with my boy taught me the Lord's been there. He's never walked away. He's there. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine.
If y'all have never been to youth rally before, you guys think this is some um, emotional show, y'all are wrong. Yeah. Um, you probably just never fe saw a little much of the blood that Jesus Christ shed for us yeah. and Amen. saw on that a little more that Jesus Christ, it still amazes me how when he did not have to, on his own volition, came down here to die for a bunch of sinners like us. Yeah. And we weren't deserving of it. We weren't worthy of it at all. And if somebody's here and they think, I know why he died for me, well, you shock me because I don't know why he died for me and it amazes me. Yeah. And one of the things that I don't understand is how you, people's been here. I think you guys had this church for about 35 years. About 35 years. And not once have you been able to stand up and give God the glory for something he's done in your life. Or something done, you might be here and you're like, this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. Well, let me tell you, you can find something the Lord gives you that you can praise Him about. If you are saved tonight, you got something to be thankful for. You got something you can praise God for. There's a lost world out there who don't have what you have in here. There's a lost world that's on their way to hell. And you guys are on your way to heaven. You guys got a home in glory. You guys got a Savior that you can go to whenever you need to. They don't have that. And you have that here. Don't take for granted what's here. Not every place has some place like this that you can come to to get help. Not every place has it. And while you're here, you should get as much of this youth rally as you can. And I sure hope it's the last youth rally. I hope the Lord calls us on home. I sure hope that this is the last youth rally and that it would be, this would be the great time for the Lord to come back now. Yeah. Amen. But Amen. while we wait, we got to go warn them. Yeah. And we got to tell them right. where they're going. Yeah. And if, it's our job to tell them. Amen. What, and what's the use of coming here and getting something from Brother Cody and the other preachers and if you go out there and do nothing about it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for what the Lord's done in my life. And I'm thankful to be here. Amen. 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 I wanted to give thanks to a few people that are in this church right now. Thank you to the Lord for giving me a mother figure because mine isn't doing right. This is right. Is Rick Kowski back here? And Miss Ruth and Miss Sherry. Thank you for being here. I've only known her since I moved down here last year with my brother. And I've only known Miss Ruth for a few months when I've been down here. I've known Miss where are you? Wherever you are. I've known Miss Sherry since I was little. Thank you for being here and being right and keep living right. Amen. It's real stuff. Real stuff. And I want to thank the Lord for bringing me down here. Because before I, before I came down here, I was dibbling and dabbling and everything, just like Golan was talking about. Depressed all the time. I could barely even eat. I couldn't eat. But now, I can eat like a pig. Eat more than old. I want to thank the Lord for being good to me. Amen. Amen. And stay with me. I couldn't sit back. You young people, be careful what you do. When I was your age, I was hell on wheels, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Every minute of it. Right now, you're looking at a man who should be on death row. By now, I'd probably be in the needle by now, dead. We were living in a house. Landlord wasn't very nice. I was going to kill that man. I was going to kill his wife and kill him, kill him afterwards. I wanted to have him watch his wife die right in front of him. 
But God seemed fit not to have that done. My wife got saved the day before I was going to kill that man. And Rachel and her mama come over and talk to me about salvation. I was so backslidden, I forgot what salvation was. I even forgot I was even saved. But praise the Lord, I was. Praise the Lord, my wife got saved. Amen. They put me in church. He, he took that house from me. He gave me a home. He gave me a church. He gave me a job to do in the church. And I love every minute of the job I do. Now, I don't think I could ever be a pastor. I, I don't know how he does it, but, but by the grace of God, he does it. Amen. And I pray for my pastor every day. I pray for my associate Amen. pastor. Amen. And, and you young people, you're, you're probably wanting to go to the world. Stay away from the world. Yeah. The Amen. world is not where you need to be. Amen. Amen. Right? The church is where you need to be. Amen. How about shut your mouth for a change and listen to what the pastor's got to say about things? Yeah. Amen. Instead of backbiting and talking about your brother and your brother and your sister and running them down. You shouldn't be running people down. You should be bringing them up. Amen. Yeah. I'm Go so ahead, tired brother. of people bringing you down all the time because maybe how you look, maybe how you are, maybe you ain't as smart as your sister or brother. I'm tired of that. Yeah. yeah. I'm very tired of it. But when I was a child, the things I've done, I'm not going to revel in them. I have nightmares at night for the things I've done. Nightmares. I can't sleep sometimes at night. And I've got to get on my knees in the middle of the night, twitch and preach and all, and pray to the Lord. Please forgive me. I know he's forgave me a long time ago. But still, watch what you do. It'll affect yeah. you the rest of your life. Amen. Yes, sir. Military yes, sir. men go to war and are scarred for life for what they're doing in the battlefield. How about you when you rob that woman? How about you when you punch that man in the face? That is going to affect you the rest of your life. I remember times going to Philadelphia. And we'd get drugs or whatever we're getting, and uh, I watched people get shot right in front of me. Everybody scatter about, and nobody cared. Stop right there on the side of the street. You don't want to see them things, young people. Right. Yeah. Stay in your church. Stay in your home. Listen to your parents. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, we're, we're on earth 30, 40, 50 years. Grandparents, 70, 80 years. They've been on earth. They've got a little bit of wisdom to them, even if they're worldly. But if you're at a home, where you got a godly mother and father, listen yeah. to what they have to say. Amen. Amen. That faraway country is not the way to be. Amen. That young man left his father, took his inheritance, and ended up eating, eating with the pigs. Is that what y'all want to do? Eat with pigs? Come on. Come on. I don't think so. I've been there. I've done that. But by the grace of God, I'm here. Yes, sir. Amen. That's all I got to say about that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> If my pastor wasn't faithful, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I'd be probably dead. Right. Amen. 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 Nobody moves, nobody dies. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot something. I was nervous. <laughs> Everyone down here, even though I don't know half of you, or like a quarter of you, um, feels like family. Yeah. Like Jonah and Miss Becky and Jordan and Jordan and Brooke, Amen. Jameson, Ethan, Earl, Jalen, if I didn't say your name, Owen, Carl. All you guys, I barely even know you, and it feels like family. And I, have, and I don't have a godly family other than my dad and brother. Why are you acting surprised? Oh. Um, I said other than. Um, but I'd like to ask prayer for my mom. Amen. Amen. She hasn't been living right for a while, and when I was living up there, I wasn't either. She's, she's in jail right now. She just went in back in March. I don't know how long it's going to be, but she asked for a Bible. So I pray that she'll get right, and she'll come back. Amen. 
and I thank the Lord for my pastor. I remember when, um, when I was younger, listening to Brother Lynch's messages, and he was in there, always acting like an idiot, but for God, so it was good. <laughs> and I always wanted to meet him, and then last year when I came down here, I was so excited. And when my mom came down here and visited us right before she went in in, in March, we, um, she, we, we told her that some old couple from the church had an extra room that she could stay in because we didn't want to say that he was a pastor and her get mad at us. So she spent the day with us. She watched our team lose again. Um, and, you know, we went to the mall and skate park and everything, and then we're trying to find somewhere to eat. Waffle House is closed. It's not 24 hours. And we come to, we, we go to Pastor's house, and it's like 1030, and we miss the road, so we do a U-turn, and she gets stuck in the ditch. So we have to call Pastor to come get us out, and it's like 1045 by the time we go over there. Um, so pray for her, and pray for uh, her to get right, and when she does Amen. come back, that she'll come to church with us. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to start out with the way I was raised. I was at work today, so I didn't come to church dressed in a skirt or a dress. So I sat back there and battled about coming up here. I'm from North Carolina. I was, my grandmother was a Baptist, and I was raised in the Holiness Church. I'm a teacher at Central Delaware Christian Academy, and one of my students asked me to come and share some of my testimony. I'm 70 years old, so there's a lot of testimony to share. So I gotta pause a little bit so I can see the part that I think the Holy Spirit really wants me to share. The majority of what I talk to my students about on a day-to-day -day basis is about getting in the word for themselves so they can see what God says for themselves. But some of what I want to say is related to some of what's going on in the world today. I thank God I feel like I'm in a church where I don't have to worry about being politically correct. There's a lot of foolishness going on in this world about racism. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I want to say, when I was, I was raised in, in total segregation for the first 14 years of my life, the laws had already been passed to do integration. But several states did not do it immediately. So when they decided in Charlotte, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina to do it. I was in junior high school, and they sent three white teachers. Two of them lasted about two days. One remained. The one that remained was my teacher. I was 14 years old. I was in AP classes. I was always an excellent student. Because in the South in that time, you were pumped that you need that education. So I got my education. I understand I'm in a home with my mother, I'll just make it short. My mother died at 47 from alcoholism and throat cancer. My dad died at 53. He was a drug dealer. I'm the oldest of five girls and I basically raised them along with my grandmother. When I got my first white teacher, um, he was a bold man and to this day I believe God sent him. He went to my home and three or four girls in our classes were getting pregnant. He told my grandmother, I know a program that would get her out of this. She's too smart, she doesn't need to be here. Or she's gonna get caught in what they're caught up in. You white, as a white person, go to a black person and they say, your kid needs to get out of here. They'll be ready to smack your face. <laughs> my grandmother said, praise the Lord. <laughs> so he took me to take a test, I took a test, and I received a scholarship to an exclusive private school 
in Kingston, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is my 53rd year of graduating from that school. I swore I would never go back there because you have to realize I was raised in North Carolina. I saw a lot of foolish stuff. And for a time, I was filled with hatred. But I got saved at 14. But you know we can be saved and still be walking around with some garbage inside of us. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. I, so I was a racist. And I didn't like white people until I met Mr. Perrin, that bold teacher who got me out of there. So I said I'll never, when I graduated, I said I'll never go back there. The 47th year after I had left that school, they asked me to come back and tell about my experiences. So I did, I talked to a young group of, of minority kids. And they were like, what was it like for you? That was 66, 1966. I went back the next year because they said, can you come and cook a soul food dinner for me? I thought I was gonna cook for a little small group, like 30. They said, no, we want you to cook for the whole school. I said, are you kidding me? So I took my friend and we did that. The 50th year, I said I wouldn't go back, but I went back. And I shared with my friends how lonely it was there. But not because anybody on purpose was doing anything for me. I was looking at what was going on around me. But I wasn't looking at Jesus. So about when I got 21 years old, I started realizing that Jesus needed to be the Lord of my life. Amen. But if I was full of hatred, that wasn't going to happen. So I had to give that up. God sent the right people in my life to do that. Amen. I defy any of these young people that's out here protesting, talking about tearing down this country, to tell me what you've been through as a black person that was worse than what I went through and I can love. Amen. They wouldn't put me on TikTok or Twitter. But in Christ Jesus, yeah. we don't have any race issues. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, because I had it difficult in life, most kids in the beginning don't want to be in my class. Because don't come to my class thinking you're going to get coddled, because you're not. <laughs> don't come to my class thinking you're going to disrespect me. If I call your name, you better not say what. That's right. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, Miss Tolliver. I didn't hear you, Miss Tolliver. What did you say, Miss Tolliver? Yeah. Could you repeat that, Miss Tolliver? I'm from North Carolina. Amen, <laughs> you yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Right. <laughs> Some of my students are back there. Olin and Ethan are my students. I love my students. I don't care what my students are like, I love them, no matter what race they are. And I think the church has got to start standing up and stop being afraid of what the world is saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna allow anybody to tell me that every white person is a racist. How do you know? Did you try to get to know them? I'm tired of people saying only white people are racist. Black people are racist. You know why I know? Because I was the Black Panther. But I'm not now. I'm a Jesus Panther. Yeah. One by one, we got to stand against the enemy. We got to love one another, no matter what race, color, or creed that we are. Amen. I don't care what the world says. We're not in, we're in this world, but we're not of the world. Yeah. So we got to be different. I'm going to leave you with this one last word, because I actually don't know what else I to say. But the Bible says, love one another. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Y'all ready to go? I want to thank you all for, for having us down here. Uh, thank uh, Pastor Ryman. Um, I'm going to get to the point real quick. Now, um, two minutes uh, to get you to the point. Um, I want to ask you, want to ask you all for a favor. Um, I don't need a loan or anything, brother. Um, yeah. I want to ask you to sing a song, if you could. If your, if your choir could sing a song. Um, so I've been saved about almost 30 years now, only been in, um, I believe in churches for maybe 10 years or so, um, grew up in a charismatic Baptist church, used all these different modern versions. So I want to praise God for, um, King James Bible. Not, not many people, not many people have that. And, uh, I can tell you growing up, I didn't have that. And, um, I'm barely thankful for the King James Bible. Amen. I also want to praise God for, um, I want to praise God for my wife, for my family. Man, if, you have a, if you've got a God-fearing, God-loving wife, be thankful for that. Saw, King Solomon couldn't find one in a thousand. So I don't know how she ended up with us. I don't know how that happened for us. So I want to praise God for a, a God-fearing wife. And um, you know, when I first got, got into a Bible-believing church, um, it was one of those churches where everybody knows that you're the new person because everybody uh, knows everybody else there. So, um, you know, once you start going there a couple of times, uh, people start loving on you, start giving you stuff, and you end up with about like 15 CDs of like all this different music, you know, Christian music that people want you to listen to. And some of it's like gospel stuff. Some of it's like twangy bluegrass. And, you know, somebody handed me a CD of this uh, church that uh, really lively piano and it sounded like a choir like kids and and grown-ups and stuff and I don't know if this guy's still here or, or not but um, the guy that was kind of introducing the songs on the CD was Renee Myers I think was the guy's name not here anymore but um, one of the, the first time I heard this song you guys all sang it on the on the choir or the choir sang it I guess and it was, uh, it's still the blood. And it's my favorite, I think it's probably my favorite hymn. And uh, so I was wondering if you at all, it would be a real blessing to me, that CD, I can't tell you, um, I'm sure that to a lot of people that um, your CDs have been a real blessing. And it's one of the things that, you know, we got that CD, we put it on our phones and stuff. And I can't tell you how many hours and hours and hours that we've probably listened driving around. We do a lot of driving in our family. How many hours that we've listened to y'all's songs from that CD whenever you put that together. And um, so I was wondering if you would all, if your choir would all sing it, Steal the Blood for us. That would be a real blessing to me. Thank you. Everybody sing it with us. And, and let you sing the verses. Uh, if I can remember them. Right. We'll help you. And uh, maybe we can use this as kind, of kind of our benediction tonight. All right, let's be it. What a night. Let's be it. What a night. Oh, I'm hoarse, man. Good. My wife says I always sound hoarse. No, you're right.
Chicken sandwiches, we got some. No, we don't have hot dogs. We got hot dogs. We got hot dogs, okay? We got hot dogs. We got nachos and chili and all that stuff. It's all free. You ain't got to pay for it. It's all free. Hallelujah. And the bookstore is going to be open. Amen. Um, like I said, hey, you know what this is? They call it a youth rally. You know why you rally everybody up, get them stirred up. Did y'all get your cup full tonight? Yeah. Brother Mike Gray, that was a great message. Yes, sir. Amen. Great message. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, Brother Jack wants to get rid of these things for his ministry. If y'all want to buy one, see Brother Jack. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we'll be in here again. 9 o'clock is breakfast, then uh, 4 o'clock service. I, I'm thinking, too, now, I'm thinking about maybe Sunday we'll do a 4 o'clock service rather than six and uh because everybody's gonna be dead yeah i got a motive but we might have a four o'clock service on sunday too but um anyway i i got a blessing i i got a blessing tonight a lot of times preachers to have a meeting you it's hard for you to get a blessing because you're trying to pray about everything and looking at everything and you're trying to make sure you're leading being led by the spirit of god but I'll tell you, I got a blessing. I got a blessing to see you all get a blessing. That's what it's all about. Jason Dumas, why don't you come up here and pray for the food? This is my brother, Jason. I appreciate him. He fell off a ladder. Oh, he says he fell off a ladder. I think his wife took a baseball bat to him. Hey, Amen. I'm just glad to be here. Two weeks ago, I didn't think I'd be here, but... Amen. Man, visitors, don't you love Faith Baptist Church? Man, it's been a blessing to me. I, I started 2009 here, and I'll tell you what, been a Bethel moment. My Ebenezer's been raised here. God's done some things to me here. It started in 2009. I love this place. We all love this man up here on the platform. We're not lifting him up in a way we, he shouldn't be, but we're lifting him up in the way he should be. Uh, we appreciate them. So thank God for Faith Baptist. Thank God for the youth rally. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord. You are indeed good to us. It's been good to be here, Lord. And it's been really good for you to meet with us. And we appreciate it, Father. We hope you did indeed find pleasure here tonight in us. Uh, we hope, Lord, that uh, uh, for the very reason we were created, that uh, you were fulfilled tonight, God, in us bringing you pleasure. Uh, you, you helped us and you encouraged us here tonight, God. We pray for a blessing upon those who contributed. But, Lord, we appreciate all the good food that's been supplied and uh, prepared and donated. We pray you look upon all those people who had that part and bless them, bless their hands. And we thank you for it, and we pray you bless it all and nourish it to our bodies. And, Lord, uh, give us a good night's rest. Get us back here tomorrow, Lord. Get, keep us, uh, get us all nice and lively and awake and ready to go and uh, attentive, Lord. And if there's any stiff necks in here, God, get rid of those and soften our hearts, Lord God, and help us to be humble and, and uh, come with the right attitude, Lord. And certainly if there's any brother or sister in here who's got a problem with somebody else, God, help them get it right here tonight. We thank you, God. You are indeed good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if I could have everybody's attention real quick. There is food, like was said. We just.